man, if we if we could if we had the damn welder here, we could hook up and pull it to it on the top seam, throw a good bead on the top right here because it's, it's lining up great. The flange in the center on this are exactly like they always are. Welding that outside. We have our stub ups. Candy canes will be here this afternoon from the galvanizer. Um, and we will position the top plate to index in the right location. And, and then uh, we've got the other ones that are gonna be going up here. Exhaust, exhaust pipe for the generator. Plumbing and electrical, we have a few more electrical pipes that need to be placed up, stubbed up, but, and then we will be uh, setting those other air pipes, the intake air pipes down there on the far end. Welder and helper welding up the vertical pipe for the drainage ditch, getting the cap welded on there. They've already cut slots and the holes for the, uh, the drainage pipe right there to go through welded up the extension pipes here this morning have all of our stub ups for electrical in the generator pod all the pipes are stubbed up all right so this is the first time i've seen this bunker because i've been in europe but this is two 10 by 40 side by side what's unique about this job is that these bunkers don't have the underfloor storage so one bunker is for living, the other bunker is strictly for storage. But it still has everything else that we normally do. You got your escape tunnel. This one's gonna have two uh, condensation air pipes, one for the air in, 
uh, one for the air out, and it's got two air systems, so end up with four of those. There's the French drain running around the bottom. So what they'll do, they'll run a French drain, they'll put engineered rock over that. This guy is not going to backfill with concrete because of the cost, so, but we're still gonna put in the French drain with the engineered rock for water flow. That way water pressure never, never builds up on the bunker. As you can tell, it's made with the I-beam construction. It's sitting on a concrete pad down there. That over there is gonna be a dedicated sump pump, okay? Just in case, it's better safe than sorry. But I'll walk around it for you. Now, if the stair looks high in the air, it's because he's going to build up his ground here. He couldn't dig down far enough. So he's gonna build up for his uh, foundation, for his building that's going on top of this. This also has the mud room, the generator room, and the battery room over here. All right, one other thing. Uh, so on each one of our fittings, we use uh, the Red Hot Blue Glue. You'll see the purple primer in there for all the plumbing lines. You'll see the Red Hot Blue, and that is a welding glue. It bonds those surfaces. It melts them together. Uh, just an extra step that we go. The glue is a little bit more expensive, but it is well worth it. Uh, we want to eliminate as many, you know, you definitely don't want to go cheap at this point. And on top of that, we use a high-quality liquid Teflon on each one of the seams. So everywhere we have a penetration, we have a full welded out coupler, a high pressure coupler. On top of that, we have the um, liquid Teflon and then that red hot blue glue. So another thing with the drainage. So we have our air pipes here and these air pipes do slope back and away from the bunker as you can see. So these are the fresh air intake pipes. Uh, you can see on them as well whenever we thread them on again liquid teflon to make sure that there's no leaks in the threads and we get any water around now this top piece right here is a one-way check valve uh, so any sort of condensation will drain from the actual main body of the pipe open that valve and drain out of this foot valve basket now this is a foot valve basket we do remove the plunger uh, on the inside of that uh, and that is basically a screen mesh to help protect any sort of backfill of silt and sediment to open up that foot or the uh, the check valve now on top of the bunker we have all of these um, you know utility pipes being that this does not have the two foot underfloor storage and it is a twin bunker uh, we have to be able to bridge water lines electrical everything like that so over on that far side is the generator pod and he's not putting an actual generator in at this time uh, they're going to be pumping off of the grid so what we've set him up with is kind of just some forethought you know we're gonna you know his electrician's going to come in and put his power coming in off the grid down into this pipe and have a service loop and then come up out of this pipe over to the pipe in the far corner which is directly underneath or overhead of his electric panel into here and now and we have I have all of those labeled and then this second pipe right here is all the home runs now this is going to bridge have a pipe running all the way to this corner where we have we ran all of the home runs for this pan or, you know this other bunker so all of the wires are going to come out of there and tie into the breaker panel. The breaker panel is going to be in one of the bunkers. Also, another thing that we do here at Atlas is on every single one of these uh, seals, we put a product called Through Roof. It is a silicone. It stays kind of tacky, um, but it is a full silicone sealant. 
that we put in between these two mating surfaces and then we bolt and torque these things down uh, no real spec rating on that torque but we torque it down right there and you can see it's still pliable but you know it will stay like that for forever basically and that's going to keep any sort of excess ground moisture if, if water ever gets to that point keep it out of the inside of that pipe and we do it on every single connection every single one of the candy canes everywhere you can see and we put enough of it on there that we get squeeze out all right here's another angle walking up here to the edge of the hole so we've dug back here in coming into that pipe right there so he'll backfill or have his uh, excavator company you know backfill this hole this portion with gravel and it's going to travel it's got a little v cut into it kind of hard to see in this dirt but it'll go all the way out there to that little lip and drain off into the hole down to the rest of the drainage system so any sort of condensation which these pipes you know depending on the season may put off a little bit more you know in the summertime than than others but uh it's all going to depend on your climate what your weather's like is how much humidity and condensation is going to collect into this pipe okay here we are at the twin 10 by 40s uh, with eight foot ceilings and no underfloor storage coming down the stairs into the mud room we have our lights on just temporarily hooked up to a generator outside and to the left is going to be the generator pod slash battery room. This customer is just using it for storage uh, until they figure out how they're going to power their bunker. And then over to the right, come through the decontamination room and then directly into the bathroom. And this bathroom has a 30 inch vanity with a quartz top, a flush toilet, full shower, Right in here, and being that we don't have any underfloor storage, uh, the plumbing's a little bit more exposed, just you know, the nature of the beast of not being able to run it underneath. Now, as you come in through that, we have the barn doors that slide in, and this is the bunk room, so you can actually fit, the customer's planning on fitting double bunk beds along this wall and this wall here. On either side uh, you know with the doors and the doors will be able to slide and then once you go through you come into the living room slash kitchen you know again six foot of countertop actually this is seven foot of countertop and then uh, space for a microwave uh, they opted for a TV a bookshelf and then on through to the back bedroom which is the master and there you can see we have temporary power hooked up and the air system is running that's how quiet this swiss air system is i can actually talk while it's actually running and you can barely hear it at all so while it's functioning and they're underneath here it is nice and quiet now one thing that is different with that 8x20 than the other ones is this actually has a hidden door so this bookshelf slides here and this is something that's custom built here at Atlas on these uh, linear bearings post and goes right through to that second bunker so if you didn't know it was here it uh, and no one showed you you would just think that that was the end of the the space so in back here is just a full a full bunker with nothing but storage potential you know, Got your water tanks, your power, your hot water heater over there, uh, flooring, plenty of plugs, and then right there is the escape tunnel. So another air system for this side to be able to keep everything filtered if you have to come over here to hide. Now we're on water and this pipe that is plugged off, that is just a spare pipe just in case the customer has something that they need to bring in here. But this one is your uh, water supply line. 
Now we put a shutoff here, so say that there's something wrong with the, the city water, grid water, it runs out, you know, it's normal position for the valve is gonna be there. You can turn that off. That will shut off the city supply. You know, if you follow this pipe around, it's a very, very simple operating system. There's three valves, uh, but this will, you know, first feed the hot water heater right there, the tankless, and the hot water will come out and supply the bunker on the other side. Now this other blue line, it goes down and feeds and fills up this, these water tanks that we put up on a platform. Now what we did is we capped off these top two plugs and uh, this water line, the supply line down here, will fill these two tanks up with grid water or whatever water he decides to bring in. And then it will come out of that where this T is right here. So once you fill it up, you shut this valve off and that will isolate these water tanks. And then you plug in, we have plug right there. You can plug in the uh, pump. So you can plug in this inline pump. Uh, you will have to open up the valve, shut off the one to the tanks and shut off the one to the city water. That way you don't just circulate the water in the tanks or you don't just pump out all the water up to the surface because this is a pressure pressure sensitive pump so as it loses water pressure in the lines it will just turn on automatically and then once the lines are pressurized it will shut off so you will open up this valve to then turn this pump on in a sense and it will pump cold water here straight on out uh, to the bunker and it will supply the hot water heater as well with all the cold water that you know you have reserved in these two tanks you know once those are empty or you get grid water you know restored you do not have to unplug the pump because it's already pressurized just turn it off turn the valve off turn on grid right there and then you refill your tanks just turn, turn this one on, refill your tanks, and then you can turn it back off once they're full and you are back to normal operating. Uh, and as we walk up, we have the breaker panel. Now, this is temporary and it is set up for the customer. He requested this so that he can plug in an extension cord or a temporary generator while he's he's working down here and we just ran a cord whip so that he can just plug this up and turn his lights on uh, but like we said earlier overhead that is going to be that two inch pipe coming down that's going to feed into the panel and then this pipe with the LB is going to go up and then make a 90 and go across the top of the bunkers over into that back corner and tie into the junction box for all of the electrical on the sleeping quarters bunker. But everything as far as control, if he ever has a breaker trip or anything like that, is all right there. All right, as we come into the kitchen, you know, quartz countertop, space for a microwave, Double plugs on either side, plenty of power. Now, function wise, we come below. Now we have a seven stage RO with a you know, pressure tank, drain line. Now, back here, you have your two water lines, and those are those shut off valves. They're all off right now. So, whenever they do pressurize the lines, you know, they can, everything can be you know, turned on by the plumber. Uh, so he can control the flow rate of the water. That white valve that shut off there, that is to the RO. Now, whenever you have an RO system, if you're not going to be using your bunker for a while, the manufacturer recommends that you turn it off. So you don't just have pressure sitting on the, the seals of your filters. Um, that way you, know, you can keep it from ever having a failure there. It's just you know, maintenance, good things to know. And down here we have a small miniaturized Sani flow, and that is just a single station. You have your, you know, sink coming in, the middle 
that goes up there to the right, that one inch line, that is your drain line. We downsize that to a three quarter to get a little bit more head pressure out of it. And then your vent line, which is back there, just bringing in fresh air so it doesn't get vapor locked. Everything's plugged in back here. Uh, the RRO has a UV light and a pump, so that's plugged in. And then you have your regular setup for your kitchen sink, your handle set, and then you have your RRO. Hey guys, Ron here. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. I know it was very detailed and that's very important because a lot of people are deciding to do bunkers themselves and I'm trying to help you how to do your own bunker or if you want to purchase a bunker from Atlas Survival Shelters here at the Dallas, Texas factory and install it yourself, you can maybe learn how to do it yourself. All you got to do is be a general contractor and you can do a lot of this stuff. But guys, I don't mind sharing secrets with you guys because we're very transparent. We're very proud of what we do. And you'll notice no other bunker company shows the details like this. You know why? Because they don't make bunkers like Atlas. Between our underfloor storage, our eight foot ceilings, our Swiss air systems, our gas tight doors, our bulletproof hatches, sandblasting, painting, steel air pipes, galvanized pipes, nobody can hold a candle to Atlas Survival Shelters. And that is why 100% of people who do their homework and compare Atlas to anybody else chooses Atlas. So guys, as always, thanks for watching my video. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.